as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, we present Sergeant Preston of the Yukon by special recording. Brought to you by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns. In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold! Gold discovered mutual. Whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains, it's all on mutual every week over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston and King had escorted Major Warren, the military governor, on a tour of inspection. Their last stop was the Northwest Mounted Post far to the north of Dawson, on the shores of the Beaufort Sea. By the time they reached there, it was late September, and the days were growing shorter. The sun still shone brightly, but on the afternoon, the Sergeant and King saw the tiny sail on the northern horizon. There was a keen edge to the wind. It drove the small boat swiftly toward the island. There seemed to be only one man in it. He lowered his sail as the boat neared the shore, and a few minutes later, the sergeant helped the sailor beach the tidy craft. We'll run her up as far as we can. The tide will be going out in another hour. Where are you, sir? There. That's just doing. You're in Northwest Mountain. Sergeant Preston, it's her service. And this is Herschel Island? That's right. I've made it. Have you got a doctor here? There's Father Antoine, a commission. He will? No. It's my friend, Harry, in the boat northeast of here, beyond the pack ice. She was anchored off Borden Island when we left her. But the captain planned to cruise farther north toward the ice cap to wait for the freeze-up. So you jumped ship and uh, stole a boat to do it? Yes, sir. It was Harry's doing. He talked me into it. Oh? How? He said the Polar Quest was a death ship. That there was a killer aboard. And the only way to save our lives was to light out. Was he ill at the time? No, sir. He didn't take sick until he was out for a year. What did he mean, a killer aboard? He wouldn't say anything more than that. But you believed him? Yes, sir. You must have had some reason. I was willing to believe anything by that time. They're queer blokes, those explorers. Three of them in charge of the expedition. And you could see they didn't trust each other from the beginning. If Captain Ramsey didn't lie down the law and tell him who was master, they'd have been at each other's throats. Who are these men? There's Professor Croydon and Kurt Elmuth. He's the only one who's tried that sort of thing before. A German. And an Indian named Dr. Singh. An East Indian? Aye, but educated at Oxford. Sergeant, could Father Antoine give you any idea how ill this man Harry is? When he might regain consciousness? No, sir. Oh, here's Father Antoine now. Well, Father, how's your patient? Major, I am sorry. The man is dead. Dead? Harry's dead? We, oui, my son. No. What was it, Father? Exposure? Exposure? I kept him well covered. I took care of him like a baby. It is a strange case. I am not prepared to say what caused his death. Naturally, you haven't had much time to examine him. One could only be sure after an autopsy as to the exact cause. I cannot name the poison. Poison? We, oui, that is certain. But nothing like arsenic or strychnine. A slow poison. An exotic poison. The type that we associate with the Far East. I have only encountered the symptoms in books. The Far East, Father? India, perhaps? Oui, Sergeant. India. A slow poison. You mean Harry could have been poisoned before he left the ship? Oui. Dr. Singh. Father, are you prepared to perform an autopsy? Oh, it is impossible here. A well-equipped laboratory would be necessary. But you're sure he was poisoned? I am sure. I'd like to speak with you alone, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Harry was my best friend, Padre. You don't know what it means to me. I do, my son. Believe. Looks like murder, Sergeant. Yes, sir. 
It would seem that the poisoning took place while the polar quest was anchored at Borden Island. That's Northwest Territory. The case comes under our jurisdiction. That's right, sir. If you were ordered to get to the polar quest and investigate, how would you do it? We have small boats, sir. Uh, through the pack ice and against the prevailing winds. They'd never make it before the freeze-up. Might be better to wait for that. Travel by dog sled. Yes, but there may be an alternative. The cutters you in with supplies. Captain Dayton isn't under my command, but he should be willing to cooperate. We'll find out. The cutter Victoria arrived the following day, and the Major placed his problem before Captain Dayton. So you ordered Sergeant Preston to find the polar quest, Major? Yes, Captain. If you can't take him, he'll wait for the freeze-up and travel by dog sled. That won't be long. But when the freeze-up does come, Croydon and Helmut and Singh will be on their way to the North Pole. I see. Perkins, are there many channels through the pack ice? Aye, sir. An open sea beyond? Aye, sir. Captain Ramsey planned to cruise due north from Borden Island. Until the polar cap was sighted, sir. Uh, it would take a week to get there, Major. Too long? A week there and a week back. It's just about the limit. Twenty-four hours aboard the polar quest, all I ask. Sir. You shall have it, Sergeant. If we can find her. The Victoria left Virgil Island that same day. Her course north by northeast, across the Beaufort Sea and into the Arctic Ocean. On the second morning, she reached the pack ice. Beyond, it was a dazzling pink as it reflected the rays of the sun. And without dark glasses, it would have been impossible for the men on board the cutter to stand the glare. The sergeant and king stood beside the captain on the bridge. From here, it looks to be a solid field. Oh, loose eh? See what I'm pointing? That black line? A channel through it. Probably half a mile wide. Oh? Will you take it? Yes. Luckily, it heads due north. But we won't be able to follow a straight course from now on. A lot of twisting and turning. I'll take the wheel myself when we get into it. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Hurry and get pencil and paper right now. There's some fun and excitement waiting for you. Can you guess what it is? Yes, sir, it's the ballpark where everything is fun. The crowds, the eats, and what a thrill to see the players smack that ball over the fence. Come out to the game now as guest of your favorite team. If you're 12 years old or younger and can bring a paying adult like mom or dad, grab your pencil and paper. Here's how to get your free baseball ticket. Get a package of Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are on every ticket. Hurry, send the box top now from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. You get two free tickets when you send the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. We'll give you the address now and again later in the program. Write it down. Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. <laughs> the Victoria was surrounded by ice floes. Occasionally, a great berg rose high above the ship to port a startled. With Captain Dayton at the helm, the cutter picked her way through the field this way and that, at times reversing her direction to reach a wide channel of open water. It was slow progress, and for 48 hours the captain never left the bridge. Then, at last, a dark line showed on the horizon, the open sea. But as clear water was reached, the barometer began to fall. The wind shifted to the southwest. You need some rest, Captain. Can't take it now. We're in for some dirty weather. No telling how bad it'll be. It was very bad. The wind continued to rise. The sky clouded. A sleep storm hit the cutter, and within ten minutes, every exposed surface was coated with ice. It was almost impossible to see. Now, in the darkness, an iceberg seen too late could mean disaster. Out of port! Each half a dozen times during the next 24 hours, great ice mountains loomed above the cutter. 
the end of that time, every man on board had reached the limit of his endurance. But as long as the storm continued, there could be no rest for anyone. Then suddenly the gale slackened. The sky cleared. The waves were still high, but once more the cutter was the mistress of her own destiny. The captain shot the sun and calculated the ship's position. See any ice clear to the north, Sergeant? I think I do. Yes. Solid ice this time. We'll be heading due east now, and we should be picking up the port of quest soon. Unless... Unless what, Captain? Unless the storm was too much for her. Oh. If we'd been farther north and the storm hit, we would have been driven into that ice. Smashed. Oh. Slowly, the cutter steamed on. All hands searching for the polar quest. As darkness fell, her speed was cut still more, even though the sky was bright with stars. The sun rose and turned the birds to pink crystal. The polar cap glared to the north. And then suddenly, King raised his muzzle to the sky and howled. Hello, boy. I don't see anything. There's something ahead, you can be sure of that. It was a full hour before the lookout spotted the mass of the polar quest, sharply outlined against the ice glare to the north. Get the port! As the cutter steamed toward the ship, Captain Dayton and the sergeant studied it through their binoculars. Uh, it looks bad. Probably rammed into the ice of the storm. Still afloat, though. The damage must be forward. Those men on the ice must be unloading the stores. Will that mean the ship's going down? I can't think of any other reason. Must be a hole below the water line. Well, at least... <laughs> so what's the matter? Look where I'm pointing. I can't see anything. He's gone now. I saw a man's head in that porthole just after the bridge. Are you sure? Positive. Can you run the cutter close enough for us to board her? It'll be dangerous, but we can do it. There's at least one man still on board, Captain. We'll try to get him off, Sergeant. The cutter ranged alongside the sinking ship. Ordinarily much higher than the cutter, the forward deck of the Polar Quest was now only a few feet above it. Boarding would be a simple process. It had been decided that the sergeant and George Perkins would make the first reconnaissance. And now they stood ready to climb aboard the stricken vessel. King stood beside his master. Don't worry, boy. I won't leave you behind. This cabin is that, George. I'm pointing there, just in back of the captain's quarters. That would be Professor Croyd. Finish with engine. Go to it, Captain. We'll stand by for ten minutes. That's as much time as I can give you. Should be plenty. All right, up you go, King. <laughs> the sergeant lifted King in his arms and tossed him onto the sharply slanting forward deck of the Polar Quest. The sergeant and George climbed aboard after him. This way, sergeant. They ran up the companionway to the bridge, then started aft Professor Croyton's cabin. As they reached it, they heard a muffled cry for help. That's the doctor. The door's locked. Come on, put your weight again. Inside the cabin and out of the glare, the sergeant found it difficult to see. He followed King, who led him to the far corner. He's not only bound, he's gagged as well. I'll have you free in a moment, Doctor. There. Now the ropes. Are you... You are not a member of the crew. Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Police? That's right, Doctor. And if he wants the gory truth, he's come here to arrest you for the murder of my pal. George Perkins. You brought him. I did. I'll give you a hand up, Doctor. Uh, how did you know that how I... How did we know you killed him? No. How did you know that I was aboard? That they'd left me here? I saw your face at the porthole. Oh. I managed to stand up for a minute. Then the ship lurched, and I fell down again. We can talk on board the cutter. Come along, the ship's sinking. We can't leave the professor. The professor? Blimey. There he is in the bunk. He's desperately ill. Poison, maybe. Just like Harry was. Was Harry poison? You should know. He must have found out what Kurt was up to. Sergeant, Kurt Helmuth is a murderer. You must believe me. The professor fell ill just before the storm hit us. I diagnosed poison at once, and I searched Kurt's cabin. I found this vial. A likely story. Is the professor going to die? No. I've given him an antidote. Can we move him? Yes. I'll just wrap him well in the blanket. Do you want me to lend an aid? No, I've got him. Let's go. These are the facts, Sergeant. From the very beginning, Kurt Helmuth resented the society, sending the professor and me along on this expedition. He 
wanted all the glory for himself. The first man to reach the North Pole. I knew that he would try to make trouble. But I didn't realize he'd go as far as murder. How's it happen to be bound and gagged? After we hit the ice, I went to the professor's cabin to see if he was all right. Someone entered the cabin behind me and hit me over the head. When I regained consciousness, I was as you found me. Sergeant. What? There's Helmuth now, standing on the edge of the ice. Sergeant, he has a rifle. He's going to shoot. Get down. The bleeding Dutchman's trying to kill us. Stop us from getting on board the cutter at any rate. Actions speak louder than words. This certainly proves your story, Doctor. That man must be insane. I agree. It don't seem to affect his shooting. The sergeant protected the unconscious professor with his body as he crouched low behind the railing. George and the doctor were pinned down as well. Then another volley of shots rang out. But these came from the deck of the cutter. The sergeant raised his head. He could no longer see help. The forward deck of the Polar Quest was now lower than the cutters. Captain Dayton edged his trim craft between the ship and the ice field and shouted for the sergeant to come aboard. He can't let you know, sergeant. Come on. The professor was lifted aboard the cutter. The doctor followed him, then the sailor. But the sergeant suddenly realized that King was missing. King was still up on the quarter deck, just outside the captain's cabin. Dayton roared at the sergeant. That tractor's standing on the wheel a minute. Hurry, sergeant. King, fire! King wanted to obey his master's command and run to his side. But he knew there was something inside the cabin the sergeant should investigate. And he stood his ground. His perseverance was rewarded. The sergeant started up from the lower deck just as the water started closing over it. What is it, boy? King scratched frantically at the cabin door. The sergeant opened it. Captain Ramsey was lying on the floor. There was a dark stain on his pocket. The sergeant knelt beside him. Still alive, King. The sergeant lifted the captain in his arms and hurried out to the bridge. The polar quest was sinking fast now. The cutter was about 20 yards away. All right, Captain. The water crept up toward the bridge as the cutter maneuvered closer. A few seconds more and the ship would plunge to the bottom. Eagle hands reached down from the cutter's deck for the sergeant's burden. The sergeant lifted King to the cutter's deck and then followed him. The cutter pulled away. The stern of the polar quest reared high in the air. It hung there motionless for a second, and then the ship dove to the bottom. A great whirlpool marked its last resting place. Then the vacuum filled, and the sea was calm once more. Captain Ramsey was taken to Captain Dayton's cabin, and Dr. Singh dressed his wound. Well, Doctor? I can't say. Touch and go. I think he'll pull through, but he won't be able to talk for days. Who shot him? After what Helmuth tried to do to us, we can make a pretty fair guess. Of course it was Helmuth. He seems to be in complete command. What I can't understand is why the ship's crew should be taking orders from him. They have no choice. He's one man against many. Oh, no, he is not alone. He had six men on board who were to travel to the pool with us. Helmuth hired them. They were all well armed. Obviously, they held guns on the... player in person? Maybe you've seen his picture on the sport page or on the screen. But what a thrill to see him in person, right there on the ballpark with the crowds cheering and yelling. And now's your chance. Come on out to the ball game as guest of your favorite team. You can get in the park free. If you are 12 years old or younger, just bring mom or dad a paying adult. To get your free ticket, just get a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muppet shredded wheat. Tear off the box top and send with your name and address to baseball Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Details are right on the ticket. And boy, what fun you'll have. What excitement. (laughs) Hurry, kids. For each free baseball ticket, send a box top from Quaker Puffed Wheat or Puffed Rice or Muffet Shredded Wheat. Or get two free tickets by sending the guarantee seal from Quaker Paco 10. Write down the address so you won't forget. Baseball Box 5205. As soon as darkness gave them a complete shield, a small boat was lowered from the cutter. The sergeant and six men started for the ice field. King stood in the bow of the boat, searching the bitter wind. As they neared the ice, he growled. There was a large fire blazing half a mile to the north. 
And now another one sprang up at the edge of the water. Change the guard, Sergeant. Change the course. A little more to the east. Aye, aye, sir. The ice, which from a distance seemed level, on close inspection, was seen to be spotted with hummocks and cut by crevasses. One of the small, icy hills rose sheer from the water's edge. And it was behind this the sergeant and his men landed. Come on, man. Then, staying as close to the ground as they could, they started for the main camp where Helmuth was directing the work. They crawled closer and closer to the glare of the campfire. And then suddenly there were shots from the water's edge. Hey, hey! There's a boat here! They're blinded! Get down, down, boat. Who's the fool? Why did you let them? Find them! There we are, Kurt! At the sound of the sergeant's voice, Kurt fired wildly into the darkness. The sergeant fired only once. Young him, Sergeant. Stay here. The shot that had wounded Kurt struck confusion to the camp. Kurt was clutching his right arm. And before his men knew what was happening, the sergeant had reached his side and held him tightly. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. What do you want most in a car? Economy, pride, or personal safety? Well, if you're a good driver, you can have all three with an automobile in tip-top condition. A car kept in good running condition is more economical than one that isn't. And needless to say, your personal safety is wrapped up in how well your car responds mechanically. This month, we are placing special emphasis on vehicle maintenance, which should be a year-round job. Here are the points that require careful examination. Brakes, headlights, rear and stop lights, tires, wheel alignment, exhaust system and muffler, windshield wipers, all glass, the horn and the rear view mirror. When driving, be sure you can see, steer and stop safely. It takes two to do this, you and your car. Your life and the lives of your passengers are only as safe as your car. Get a thorough checkup today. This message is brought to you as a public service. Now, here is Sergeant Preston. You sent for me, Inspector? Yes, Sergeant. A miner named Frank Bryan has just arrived in town. He says his partner died of pneumonia while they were working their claim out in the wilderness. But his story sounds suspicious. You think he may have killed his partner, sir? I don't know what to think, Sergeant. I want you to go out to that claim and find out the truth. Right, sir. I'll start immediately. Come along. Is Frank Bryan's partner really dead? And if so, did Bryan kill him? If it's a case of murder... The sergeant may find himself facing death before he gets to the bottom of the mystery. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you Monday through Friday by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. In cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual. Radio Network for All America.